it's a little bit more muted than normal, but you are tuned in to the pre-party. We're not doing a whole lot of partying today. We're drinking water. Uh, I'm your host, Jay Cal, and this is the NWA Power pre-party, but we're not doing too much pre-partying today because there is no NWA Power. Sorry for the delays on getting on getting everything set up today it's been kind of a oop, trying trying a day here and I'm still having difficulties so uh, goodness gracious doing the try stream again we're trying to stream on three different sites right now we are on Instagram ITV, I guess. I don't know what exactly it's called. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitch, and we are on Facebook. Now, I'm going to have my primary focus on this screen, but if you guys have questions or comments, make sure you go ahead and put them in the, uh, in the, uh, well, in the comments section. Now, if you're looking at the page right now, you're going to see a few links on the bottom. We'll, we'll get into that in just a minute, but first things first, I want to wish the president of the National Wrestling Alliance, one William Patrick Corgan, the president of the NWA, wish him a happy birthday. Guys, without Billy Corgan, the NWA isn't what it is right now. Of course, it's certainly not, uh, it's certainly not, um, it's not promoting events uh, in Atlanta, Georgia that are getting postponed, but that's not Billy's fault. That's not the NWA's fault, of course. I'm talking about COVID-19, um, but more about the NWA and Billy Corgan. Of course, uh, it was Billy's decision to purchase the NWA from Bruce Tharp about three years ago. In fact, the news broke right about now. And so it's pretty incredible to see how much the NWA has grown in such a short amount of time. And... Uh, I'm for one excited about it. Um, I do want to say thank you to Billy Corgan. Um, sorry guys on uh, sorry guys who are watching via the uh, the uh, Instagram. I guess we're freezing up pretty bad. I don't really know how good my internet connection is right now. Um, we've been having a lot of power outages in the area because of uh, well where I work, which is this is the work office, not the home office, we do experience a lot of uh, power outages when it rains. So, yeah, I can see that I'm frozen on there. Hey, uh, Bad Blood Brand, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash the Alliance blog. Um, but anyways, getting back to, getting back to the uh, point at hand, am I even on anywhere? It doesn't look like it. Let's see. Um, sorry guys, I just have to do some preventative checking here to make sure that anyone is actually seeing me. Um, let's see, let's see. Sorry, sorry, sorry guys. Uh, it says we're live. And yep, we are. Okay, so there's just not a whole lot of people watching, which is fine because uh, I know we get a lot of people who watch after the fact. But, um... Sorry for this uh, disorganization. It's been kind of a weird day today. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, if it, you're here, Woodland, and I appreciate you for being here, my my good sir. Um, so now we are back to streaming on three different platforms. Sorry that we're frozen on uh, on Instagram, but you guys could still check us out on YouTube or twitch.tv. Again, this is Jay Cow. We're celebrating Billy Corgan's birthday today, and this is coming off of uh, yesterday's bad news. Yeah, you guys heard the bad news about, uh, of course, the rampant spread of COVID-19 um, and the efforts that people are uh, using to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19, which essentially means that uh, a lot of the large gatherings have been diminished here in the United States, which includes WrestleMania, which is now at the Performance Center. MLB has been postponed. Uh, Major League Soccer has been postponed. The XFL season is canceled. Uh, basketball and hockey are on temporary hiatus. So we'll see what happens uh, with this disease, but we do know that the NWA has been very 
meticulous in their thoughts. They've been very adamant about how they've gone about uh, promoting their events. So I don't know that there's going to be a lack of content coming to uh, Tuesdays at 6.05. It just feels like it's going to be a little bit different. I did uh, briefly talk to Dave Lagana today. Of course, the announcement was made that the NWA 70th anniversary show will air in its entirety today at 6.05 p.m. Um, and uh, we're kind of hoping that, uh, you know, they'll do more things like this to keep the, the momentum going on, um, to keep the momentum going for their brand. I mean, NWA Power has been so monumental in its, uh, in its uh, convergence that so many people are so excited about the brand. So many people are excited about the NWA again. And uh, this is certainly could be a momentum killer, but it looks like at least for now, uh, according to Dave Lagana, even though that the operations have been suspended until June, they're still going to find a way to uh, continue to put content out, which is great news. Um, with that being said, over at the Alliance blog, we are putting more content out. Um, I reported today that last weekend, a former NWA North American champion, Byron Wilcott, uh, was shot outside of his home. Real scary stuff. It, it seems like his injuries are not threatening, non life threatening, I should say, um, and that he will be back in the ring at some point, but there's no timetable that has been set. Uh, Byron Wilcott not only is a former NWA North American champion, but held the Lone Star title, uh, worked for Main Event, worked for uh, Wildcat, um, and also represented the NWA in Japan by challenging the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion at the time was Satoshi Kojima, but also challenged against Hiroshi Tenzan. So he had been in Japan twice representing the, actually like four times, representing the Nas uh, National Wrestling Alliance. Him and Michael Tarver actually teamed together to take on Ten Koji, which again was Kojima and uh, Hiroshi Tenzan, who of course uh, challenged uh, was the NWA World Champion the second time that uh, Byron Wilcott challenged for the title. And Byron, Byron Wilcott, uh, Big Daddy Yum Yum, as he's more commonly known, uh, it's kind of a big thing, and it was a big thing for the NWA. Uh, constantly getting those opportunities at the World's Heavyweight Champion, battled Jack Stain, wrestled against Houston Carson, uh, had a brief feud with uh, Tokyo Monster Kahagas before he won the NWA World Championship. So there's something to be said about the, the uh, kind of wrestler that Byron Wilcott is was and of course uh, uh, he's been working for CMLL as of late so uh, all our best and a speedy recovery to Brian Wilcott we really hope that uh, he will be back soon and uh, that's uh, that's what I had to say about Byron Wilcott now tonight the NWA is showing the NWA 70th anniversary show, which was a great event. I was there live. It was headlined by the rematch of Cody Rhodes taking on uh, Cody Rhodes, then NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, taking on Nick Aldis. Now, a lot of this history of this match was presented itself via the 10 Pounds of Gold series. Of course, their first encounter uh, was the match that more or less stole the show at the um, first All In event. Now, Cody wanting to bring prestige and glory to his legacy uh, thirsted for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship and fought with vigor and tenacity to get an opportunity to hold the same belt that his father wore, that 10 pounds of gold. Hang on just a second. turned off back there. I need to grind a little bit of the tip of this off in order to continue what I'm doing. And I don't know my power source right now is um, your outlets. Plug in right there. All right. And this is one up front here. Yeah. having issues here at the office um so yeah <laughs> i don't think i need to start over completely but uh sorry we're just having all kinds of fun issues today um 
Like I said, I don't think we need to start over from the beginning, but let's talk about the NWA 70th anniversary show. Of course, the National Wrestling Alliance had that 70th anniversary show at the TNA Asylum, uh, what they used to call it, of course. It's no longer the TNA Asylum. Um, in fact, I think the building's being destroyed soon to make way for a new a new venue, a new event place there. Uh, but at the Asylum, we did see matches that crowned the new NWA National Champion. At the time, that was Willie Mack. Again, I'm not giving out spoilers here, guys. This show's from almost a uh, year, uh, gosh, a year and a half? Oh, two years ago, maybe? Yeah, two years ago. So um, we won't have an NWA power per se, but we will have content. And I think that's important. I think everyone should uh, understand why that's so important for the NWA because the momentum that they were riding with NWA power was really going into a positive direction. Unfortunately, with the uh, amount of uh, hysteria, along with real life concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic that's affecting the globe, uh, the only thing they could do is shut down the shows. Anyone who's complaining that they stopped the shows, I, I just don't think, uh, I just don't think they understand what's really important. Um, there's wrestling promotions in this area in Southern California who are reluctantly uh, not having events it's not something that they wanted to do but uh i can't believe that uh we're in a space and time where people are more concerned about putting on a wrestling show than actual the safety of the patrons and the performers on the card so with that being said uh i think the nwa is doing the right thing um tonight i think it's a top shelf classy classy move to put the nwa uh 70th anniversary show available for free on youtube and it, uh, from my understanding, it's going to be in its entirety. So you can see every uh, every minute of uh, the 70th anniversary show, which is a lot longer than the uh, 50 minutes that uh, NWA Power tends to run. And I, honestly, I kind of thought that uh, the NWA would maybe parse up some of these matches that have happened over the years. Like maybe instead of giving us uh, the entire 70th anniversary show, maybe just giving us a couple of matches like... One of the matches that's on that card tonight is uh, your boy uh, Barrett uh, Barrett Brown, former NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion, never lost the title. Um, he's uh, on the card in one of the preliminary matches, and he has a great, uh, <laughs> a really great showing. Honestly, I'm surprised that he didn't do more with the NWA after that show. Plus, we saw the War Kings in action against Josephus. We saw Tim Storm taking on the librarian, Peter Avalon. I mean, there was a lot of good matches on that card, uh, not to mention Willie Mack winning the NWA uh, National Championship. Uh, uh, we got to see Penelope Ford taking on Jazz. And remember, a lot of these, a lot of those talents now are in AEW or Impact, uh, but they were in the NWA uh, showcasing the 70th anniversary show first. So it's all pretty cool, and I think you guys will enjoy it. If you hadn't seen it, you should definitely check it out. If you have seen it, watch it again. This is the time. I mean, what else are you going to do? No baseball, no football, no basketball, no hockey, no nothing in California, no nothing in the United States. And I'm not sure how it is in the UK or in Australia, but uh, it seems like there's not a whole lot to do anyway. So might as well check out some good old-fashioned Southern wrestling. Um, with that being said, if you are watching this video on YouTube you'll see that there's several links that I've uh, posted uh, in the comments section. Um, sorry, as always, I get distracted during the, pot, uh, during the live stream and I see comments and it makes me want to read them. So I will get to your comments before I get to those links. But first and foremost, uh, Michael Manning, friend of the show, thank you for checking us out. How are things? Are you good? Are you safe? Are, have you been locked down yet? We're about to be out here in California. Um, yeah, the asylum is going, um, I, I do believe they're building a new venue there, but I, I'm not entirely sure, uh, policies and procedures in Tennessee don't really, uh, make their way out here to sunny Southern California when it's not pouring down rain. Um, still missing Willie and Jazz in the NWA. I... We've talked about this before. Willie Mack was an extraordinary performer, somebody who should definitely have been signed to a long-term contract somewhere, and obviously Impact made the best out of a bad situation. 
Um, I know that Impact has a working agreement with uh, AAA. AAA was the parent company of the um, Lucha Underground promotion, um, which Willie had a contract with. So technically, Willie had a contract with AAA. And somehow, some way, uh, the AAA prevented Willie from working any additional NWA shows, but then was signed to a contract with Impact Wrestling. So we don't really know exactly what happened there. There was some definitely some finagling. It's kind of funny. We're talking about the 70th anniversary. I just happened to wear my 70th anniversary T-shirt today. Um, Michael, I am in a city that's east of Riverside. Um, it's a very, very small town. It's been around for... 175 years 200 years but it's a very very small city called san jacinto um, most people don't know of it and uh we are far far away from los angeles um i might be closer to san diego than i am los angeles but uh uh basically what happens in la kind of has a reverting uh reverting effect against the whole state of california so um, what happens in la is mostly happening where I live as well too. It's just uh, a lot smaller scale. Um, they've closed down all the bars and restaurants. You can still go and get fast food, but you're not allowed to, uh, or you can even pick up food at the restaurant, but you're not allowed to sit inside the restaurant and, uh, dine in if you will, but we're okay so far. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about the COVID-19 because of, uh, we aren't in a, a densely populated area, but I mean, we're feeling the effects when it comes to the economy. We're feeling the effects when it comes to shortages, with things like toilet paper and water. Um, and most of all, uh, my daughter, uh, Claire, is uh, recently was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, which uh, is an autoimmune disease that makes her more susceptible to COVID-19. And my mother-in-law also lives with me and she's over the age of 60. So she's at risk for COVID-19. So we're kind of doing the whole self-quarantine, except for dad has to go to work. So uh, I'm here at work, but I'm also uh, I'm also doing this. So, um, man, where was I? <laughs> uh, so Willie Mack was uh, an amazing performer. Sorry to see him go. Really hope uh, nothing but the best for him and Impact and hopefully a reunion someday down the road with the National Wrestling Alliance. As far as Jazz is concerned, now Jazz is something different altogether. As far as I know, she's still an open contract. She can appear in the NWA any time. I don't know if any bridges were burned. Hello, Captain Cat. I don't know if uh, Jazz burned any bridges on her way out. I know that there was a scheduling conflict and an injury um, and a few other things that prevented her from... Uh, facing off against uh, Sienna or Allison K at the uh, Crockett Cup last year, um, but who knows? Maybe she'll show up again at some point down the road. I mean, you look at the NWA women's roster, and between Thunder Rosa, Jazz, or excuse me, not Jazz, Thunder Rosa, uh, Allison K, Melina, Marty Bell, um, Ashley Vox, Tasha Steeles, and uh, Perhaps one of uh, Freya the Slaya or uh, uh, what was the other girl's name? D uh, Danny Jordan. Um, hopefully that everything, uh, that, that roster is, is starting to see some more substance and, and becoming more complete. Camille's now joining the roster. We'll see her wrestle sometime soon in the near future. Of course, I have some favorites I'd like to see join up with uh, the NWA, but we'll see. Uh, time will tell. Um, but Jazz, I think, would still be a welcomed addition to that roster. I think she certainly could uh, She could add value to the NWA, even today. Um, but getting back to um, the reason why I wanted to talk to you guys today is I know that uh, some of you guys are stuck at home. Some of you guys don't have options when it comes to pro wrestling right now. Uh, I mean, you can still watch the WWE, sure. You can still watch Impact. Uh, well, I don't think Impact is airing live. I mean, you can always go to twitch.tv Impact Wrestling and, and see some of the old stuff, including NWA World Title matches. Uh, but there isn't a whole lot of options for fresh shows, fresh wrestling. So I'm going to go back the opposite way, and I'm going to go through the... Uh, uh, through the uh, discovery of older 
NWA matches, stuff that you guys probably haven't seen before. Some of you guys who are new to the NWA from NWA Power or the NWA uh, 10 Pounds of Gold series uh, might not know that there was a show in Charlotte that lasted about five months but had some really good wrestling on it called NWA in Charlotte. Um, the TV show is called NWA Unleashed. Now, if you go and look at the links here, you'll see that uh, the Vimeo account that's linked here is a direct uh, link to all the episodes of NWA Unleashed. Talents on that show were like uh, Chance Prophet, uh, Phil Shatter, who now wrestles in the WWE NXT as uh, Jackson Rikes, I think. Um, who else would you guys might know? Uh, Neil Lewis, uh, Dean <laughs> Jeffrey Neil Lewis, I think that's his name, uh, who recently appeared on Squared Circle. He's on those shows along with uh, uh, Lodi, um, Connor, who used to wrestle in NXT. I don't know where he's at with the WWE at this point, but uh, a lot of guys who uh, kind of came up through the system um, are on that show. NWA Unleashed. So if you're looking for more content, again, all of those links below um, on the comment section on here, just look, go below. Um, I also posted a link to a friend of the show, Len. Len was with me at the Crockett Cup last year and he literally taped the entire show. Um, nobody stopped him, nobody questioned it, and he has the show posted in its entirety uh, on his YouTube channel. Um, so you might want to click on that to watch last year's uh, Crockett Cup 2019. Uh, you might even hear your boy Jay doing a little bit of commentary un inadvertently because uh, I was sitting next to Lynn and we were just talking about the show. Um, the other uh, the, the other links you'll see on there, um, Scrap Iron Adam Pierce recently put out the uh, Seven Levels of Hate documentary up on his YouTube page. And uh, boy... That was a fun time for me in terms of wrestling. I did have a little five second role in that and you'll see that my wife was thanked in the credits for the photos that she took that uh, that Adam Pierce used in that documentary. I think we even got a special thanks on the website but ultimately uh, uh, that's a fun documentary to watch to see where the NWA was and how things got bad very very quick with the new ownership and the old champions. Um, something you should definitely check out. Of course, uh, I also put links to a favorite of mine that you guys probably never heard of this guy before. Um, I don't know who he is. I don't know where he comes from. I don't know what his deal is. But the YouTube link is called Cactus Back Wrestling. Um, again, the link is there. Uh, and that has so much, so much stuff, guys. I get geeky excited now we're talking it has matches from the nwa showcase which was david marquez's produced show the original championship wrestling from hollywood pilots uh that were filmed at the cbs square studios lots of nwa wrestling i, I think it was like from 2005 to 2011 a lot of crazy stuff you guys should check that out plus he's got stuff from like 1999 uh to like uh, i think 2011 I see your guys' comments, so I'll jump in on that. Captain Cat, if you look in the comments section on the on our YouTube page, uh, on this video, um, on the pre-party video, I, I left comments. Lots of NWA wrestling. I'll see, look at that. Um, their links are directly underneath uh, the video. So while you guys are watching this, when you're done, there's some links for you to follow, and that'll get you right into those those shows. Um, those videos, I mean, I saw the, uh, Dan the Beast Severn with the funky looking NWA world title, not the 10 pounds of gold, but the one the belt he was awarded after the fact, uh, taking on um, Jazz's husband, actually, uh, uh, Red Dog. Um, then there's just other matches all involved in there. And Sorry, there's a mosquito and I had to kill it. Uh, matches from... Um, Gosh, what other matches were I saw? Chris Candido uh, versus Dan the Beast Severin. Um, Shinya Hashimoto versus Steve Carino. Now, that was a brutal flipping match. Uh, Carino just got creamed in that match. Um, shows from NWA Southwest. Shows from really just uh, everything. Um, Steve Carino versus Mike Rapata. 
you guys remember Mike Ropata, right? Quite possibly the world's worst NWA world champion. Um, yeah, Captain Cat, uh, Dan's personal belt. Um, so, yeah, those are just a few links that I found today. And again, I know that you guys, you know, we all love the NWA. That's why you guys are watching this. Um, that's why we're talking NWA. Hashtag talk NWA. Um, but uh, I really feel like these are some of the matches, some of the gems that uh, you might have missed. And cert certainly worth taking a look. Um, Michael Manning says, what does everyone think about George South? Great, <laughs> great segue to the next topic, which was Circle Squared. Uh, last week, Circle Squared. Um, personally, I think uh, he was a bit refreshing. Um, that old school 80s heel, uh, something that we kind of miss today in, in today's wrestling, especially in WA, where things tend to be very black and white. Uh, or excuse me, not black and white, but very gray. Um, to me, it's it's really good to see a heel of that nature um, long term. My same complaints that I have with the Rock and Roll Express, I have with George South. Now, he, he had a decent match. I, I, I wasn't in love with it. He was able to get the claw over uh, very effectively. But ultimately, um, I want to see guys who are in their prime wrestle week in and week out. Uh, but, I, you know, the NWA showed me right now that there's room for everything. Uh, I also thought Freya the Slayer and Danny Jordan was pretty good. I know people really were hard on that match. And, I mean, it's everyone gets to say what they want. Um, I think both of them had very interesting looks. I think they both had very interesting approaches to the ring. Uh, Freya the Slayer seemed... What she has is size, right? Not a whole lot of girls in the NWA are as big as she is. Um, was she a little sloppy in the ring? Yeah, yeah, she was. Was Danny Jordan perfect? No, but she looked pretty good too. The gimmick was cute and funny, the whole Mean Girl thing. Um, I never watched the movie, I promise, but I think it had a, a, a good feel to it. Um, again, this is one of those instances where I think the NWA benefits from signing all these people. You know, Colby Carino's redemption story, the fact that he's a son of a former world's heavyweight champion, there's some validity and some value in that. Now, you know, am I putting him into a feud with Nick Aldis? No, absolutely not. Um, but he could find a way to reinvent himself in the NWA, you know, in the in the same blood that his father spilled. Maybe, maybe Colby could could find himself in the NWA the same way that his dad did after ECW. Um, I don't know. It, I don't know. Uh, so far, I, I still think that the tag teams were the highlight of Circled Squared. I really digged uh, the world's uh, best kept secret. I think that was their name. Tyson Dean and uh, uh, Tyson Dean and uh, Jeffrey Neil Lewis. And then I also really liked Ari Hawks, PJ Hawks, and uh, Luke Hawks. I really thought they were great, too. I think all four of those guys would be welcome addition to Circled Squared to the NWA. Um, but then again, we're not going to even know what happens next for that until probably June. So it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty off. Lamb, the topics that we've discussed so far, well, first we wished happy birthday to the NWA president, William Patrick Corgan. Uh, we saluted the NWA's decision to postpone the Crockett Cup and the subsequent television tapings um, until June. We also talked about former NWA world, excuse me, former NWA North American champion, Byron Wilcott, who is now, uh, resting and recovering from his injuries of being shot at he literally was shot and wounded uh about a week ago on saturday uh, we talked about that then then we transitioned to the links that i provided here on the on the facebook page excuse me sorry i had a brain fart there i think i might have had a stroke uh we talked about actually the nwa uh, deciding to air the 70th anniversary show which I think was a great move for the NWA. I think we should all sit back and enjoy that show. If you guys hadn't seen it before, you're in for a treat. If you have seen it before, watch it again. It'll be fun. 
Um, then we talked about uh, Jazz, and we talked about Willie Mack, um, both talents who uh, were victorious at the 70th anniversary show, but talents who I think we, uh, we, we all miss in the NWA, which brought us to Circled Squared. And we talked, so far I've been talking about uh, not only the match between Colby and uh, George South, but also Freya the Slayer and Danny Jordan. And then that also made me think about the first episode of Circle Squared with the Hawks versus the uh, the best kept secret in wrestling or something like that. I don't even know their name. That's bad. I should know their name. I watched the show. So now I'm going to get into your comments. Um, Lamb says he didn't watch episode two or three. Is it worthy? Um, yes and no. I mean, what are you looking for? Are you looking to be entertained? Then sure, check it out. Are you looking to see five-star wrestling? Maybe two and a three-quarter star? Um, like I said, there was some... I think there's value on everybody that they've presented on the Circled Squared. I don't think anybody has been there and like, oh, shit, that was a waste of time. Now, I know that my opinion might be a little bit different because... I see the value in somebody like Freya the Slayer. I see value in somebody like Danny Jordan. But maybe some people don't. And that's their prerogative. That's okay. They don't have to love uh, what the NWA is doing. Um, sorry, I'm just ending the... Uh, I'm deleting the video for Instagram. Nobody was watching anyways. I also ended the... Uh, the uh, Twitch episode too because just nobody was watching. I don't think there was any value to that. So, um, Captain Cat says they should have done the 70th anniversary show as a two-parter, if not three. Yeah, maybe. I look. My expertise is not producing pro wrestling content, but if I was in the shoes of of uh, one David Lagana, you kind of have to do what you have to do. Originally, they were planning to air Superpower that was leading up to the um, anniversary, excuse me, the Crockett Cup show in April. That all got kiboshed, understandably so. So what are, what, what are they doing? Well, the easiest thing they could do is just pull out the old archive, the 70th anniversary show, and throw it up there unedited, right? I mean, it was produced. It was fine. The show was done. Um, it's the oldest pay-per-view that they've done, so it's the one that's been out the longest. So... Um, they feel maybe they're not giving up a whole lot by putting it out for free. Um, plus, the, for those who hadn't seen it before, it kind of gives an introduction to the NWA uh, that they might not be aware of. You know, um, a lot of people who just started tuning in for NWA Power don't maybe don't know that Cody was the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Um, maybe don't know that Willie Mack was the NWA National Champion or that Jazz was the uh, Women's Champion. So I think it's uh, I think it's a to me, I think it's a smart move. Uh, that gives them a lot of time over the next few weeks. I mean, they haven't, they're not going to be promoting any event until June. So they have some footage in the can of new and old, right? Um, I think they have access to Paul Bosch's library. If the if I were Dave Lagana, what I would do is uh, feature one match a week with Nick Aldis. Basically, going over his matches that he had in the last three years as world champion. I call it the fireside chat with Nick where he could, you know, in the same way that they're having fans uh, watch these circle squared, you could have Nick Aldis watching his match and talking about it, maybe giving an alternate commentary, um, you know, when his matches with Bad Dude Tito, his matches with, um, you know, they're doing Cody tonight, so obviously that isn't a draw, but uh, maybe... Uh, I don't know, uh, Jack Hager, maybe his first encounter with, uh, with, uh, uh, James Storm, maybe his first encounter with Tim Storm and have these matches, uh, with, you know, just, a just, a commentary from Nick Alt Nick Aldis, you know, talking about his experience. Plus they have several matches in the can that were leading up to the NWA, um, uh, Crockett Cup. So maybe having those matches from NWA power kind of parsed out along with Nick Aldis, um, and doing, you know, cutting, having wrestlers cut promos, uh, you know, this is an unfortunate time. And this is something that, uh, I said on, uh, the talk NWA podcast that I do, which is available 
on Spotify. Uh, just look up the Alliance blog. Um, this is a time that's been kind of unprecedented in, in the world of sports and entertainment. This never happened before. Uh, you know, uh, Spanish flu virus in the 1920s, guess what? They were still playing baseball. They were still playing sports. Um, in the United States, you know, World War II, right? World War II drafted 10 million people, 10 million men into the military um, to active duty. And wrestling was still happening, guys. Uh, I said this also in the podcast. Mildred Burke wasn't allowed to wrestle in some places in the early 1930s and 40s because of her, because she was a, a woman, and women weren't allowed to wrestle in Los Angeles. They weren't allowed to wrestle, and after World War II, when uh, you know entertainment options were drying up because all the you know men were leaving from Hollywood from all walks of life sporting events. Uh, you know, they, they needed something to entertain people. And Mildred Burke, you know, was finally allowed to wrestle and defend the NWA Women's Championship in Los Angeles. Uh, that's kind of like we're in uncharted territory. Hell, even after September 11th in the United States, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, attacks on uh, American soil, uh, you know, wrestling was still happening the weekend after. You know, I think we still had Friday Night Smackdown shortly after September 11th. So we're in uncharted territory. And uh, again, that's why I put links for you guys to check out some of the older NWA. But also, you know, with the current NWA and what they're going to do, I mean, they can air matches from the Crockett Cup from last year. They can air matches from, you know, some of the matches that they've shot and filmed for the 10 Pounds of Gold. Um, they have matches in the in the can for the uh, NWA NWA. Um, power episodes that they taped i mean they could i'm sure uh david marquez would be willing to give them footage from some of the old nwa matches you know the nwa showcase or the early championship wrestling from hollywood uh, but who knows what's going to happen and, and they're going to have to get creative because you know we're in march april may june that's three months without being able to uh record fresh content i mean <laughs> Did you guys see on YouTube, Ricky Starks recorded himself wrestling a broom? And uh, as silly as it sounds, I mean, at least it's thinking out of the box and creating something that fans can watch and keeping uh, the wrestlers' names uh, in their mouths and in their mind. Uh, <sighs> Captain Cat says, depends on how long COVID is going to last. I mean, I don't know what to believe. Uh, the president said today that the disease could, you know, finding that they could have it all cleared up by july or august um other people are predicting much much longer who knows <laughs> and lamb says or ask david marquez for old nwa content which hasn't been uploaded on the united wrestling network youtube or just go ahead and use the stuff that's on the nwa showcase on youtube those way back wednesdays i mean there's some pretty good stuff in there uh, in the last few weeks i've watched on the united wrestling network channel um uh, Blue Demon versus Joey Ryan. Now, I know you guys, uh, some of you guys don't like Joey Ryan, but there was a point in time when he was still sleazy, but not a world famous dick wrestler. And uh, he was still pretty good in the ring. I mean, the tag team matches from the uh, Coupa de Lucha with uh, Los Luchas, the former NWA tag team champions, and Joey Ryan, the Carl Machine Gun Anderson. Uh, gosh, like Blue Demon versus Scott Lost, uh, the Skull Crushers versus. Cade, or excuse me, Skull Crushers versus Young Bucks, Cade and Murdoch uh, versus, uh, there's a lot of matches out there. If uh, I'm sure if Marquez was asked or something that uh, the NWA could figure it out. But again, they've got a lot of content too, so we'll see what happens. Um, back to your comments. They could show everyone in training while everything gets canceled. Michael, that's true, but where are they going to go? The NWA doesn't have a, a performance center. You know, like the WWE, they're lucky. They have their own building. So it's going to be so surreal to see WrestleMania in what basically extends to like a high school gym, right? I mean, that performance center isn't huge. And uh, there's not going to be a single fan in the audience. I mean, are they still going to do the smoke? Are they still going to do the uh, American the Beautiful with some sort of uh, celebrity singer? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Uh the NWA has to kind of prepare for the worst. And like I said, they have some content in the can. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I said it. They still have access to the Paul Bosch Library, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think they still have access to that. So, I mean, there's 
classics like Ric Flair and Harley Race and Andre the Giant and you know uh, for those who are subscribed to the NWA classics you saw a lot of those matches I uh, wouldn't be surprised if the NWA uses some of those in the time between true people like Nick Aldis are okay financially but most wrestlers in the NWA are not making a lot of money yes this is true and if you guys have the financial means to support the NWA right now they are offering several merchandise items um, tank tops sweaters if you make these purchases the money goes directly to help the wrestlers in the NWA and I know that sounds a little weird because when you think of the NWA historically it's always been like this huge conglomerate but there really aren't and I'm sure Billy Corgan is making things right for some of the talent but not everyone is signed under exclusive contract so some people are, are being affected more than others <sighs> wherever they train keep it real <laughs> so they're all going to go down to Mongrovia and we'll see some uh, some vintage karate lessons is that what you're hoping for Michael um, you were also hoping that you'd see some classics yeah I, I mean look they do have access to footage that they have access to I okay I can't say that with certainty I believe they have access to footage from the Paul Bosch library um, I do believe they have access to some videos from Impact Wrestling. I, I don't entirely know for sure. But, I mean, there's matches like the Empty Arena match with Josephus and Tim Storm. They could, they could just show it. Some people haven't seen that match. A lot of people haven't seen that match. you got to remember, 10 pounds of gold was bringing in like 10,000 views, 30,000 views, 60,000 views uh, per episode. That number gets was getting dwarfed by the NWA Power. I mean, we're talking NWA Power. Most episodes were over 100K. Some of them uh, as much as 200K. So there's some of these matches haven't been seen that are out there that they can repackage in and just to help fuel the storyline, just to help to keep the, the lights on, if you will. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> This has been a weird episode. It's been a weird week. I, I don't, I'm sorry, guys. This isn't the same as it normally is. It's just been kind of, uh, kind of spacey. Like things are, things are kind of weird right now. We're in a weird, weird space and time right now. So, um, just be patient. Be patient with the NWA. Um, like I said, Dave Lagana sent me a message and, and wanted me to let you guys know that they're sorry that they had to cancel the show, but they had to do what was right for the performers and the talent who are, are a part of it, plus the fans. Um, and uh, I guess that's it, really. <laughs> uh, oh, so social media-wise, if you guys aren't already doing so, if you're on Instagram, if you're on TikTok, if you're on Facebook, if you're on, uh, obviously, YouTube, if you're on um, Instagram, if you're on Tumblr, give us a like, give us a follow. Also, if uh, you're enjoying these contents, you're enjoying these videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up, like it, leave comments. I know it sounds silly, but it actually helps the algorithm. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys at the matches. If I can get this thing to close. Bye.